Mr. Speaker, I've been accused of undermining the president and the cabinet by allegedly making contradictory public statements from the position taken by cabinet regarding the evacuation of the people residing along the Nairobi River. My response, Mr. Speaker, is that Article 147 of the Constitution provides that the deputy president shall be the principal assistant of the president and shall deputize the president in the execution of the president's functions. Article 20, 28, which states that every person has inherent dignity and the right to have the dignity respected and protected. Article 29C, Mr. Speaker, states that every person has the right to freedom and security of the person, which includes the right not to be subjected to any form of violence from either public or private sources. Section 15G1 of the LAD Act states that notwithstanding any provision to the contrary in this Act or in any other written law, all evictions shall be carried out in a strict accordance with the following procedures be preceded by proper identification of this taking part in eviction or demolition. B, be preceded by the presentation of formal authorizations for action. C, where groups of people are involved, government officials or their representatives be present during an eviction. D, be carried out in a manner that respects the dignity, right to life and security of those affected. E, include special measures to ensure effective protection to groups of people who are vulnerable, such as women, children, the elderly, and persons with disabilities, including special messages, measures to ensure that there is no arbitrary deprivation of property or possessions as a result of eviction. This includes mechanisms to protect property and possessions left behind involuntarily from destruction, to respect the principles of necessity and proportionality during the use of force and give the affected persons the first priority to demolish and savage their property. Critically, our constitution provides at, at 147.2 that first the deputy president shall perform the functions conferred by this constitution and any other functions assigned by the president. First one to Article 3 of the constitution, I, as well as every other citizen of Kenya and state or public officers have an obligation to respect uphold and defend this constitution in performing any of my functions. This, the national values and principles of governance contained in Article 10 of the constitution by those state organs, public officers, and all persons, including myself as deputy president, wherever we make an, or implement public policy decision. In addition to this matter, Mr. Speaker, these national values and procedures include the rule of law, democracy and participation of the people, human dignity, equity, social justice, inclusiveness, equality, human rights, non-discrimination, and protection of the marginalized. Adherence to these principles become extremely important when we as state officers are contemplating legal evacuation of citizens with a duty to avoid inhuman forced eviction that will be contrary to our constitution and international law. While campaigning with, pres with President William Ruto, and subsequently when I was sworn in as Deputy President, the President and I promised as a key pillar of the Kenya Kwanzaa government that there will be no forced or unlawful evictions and that all evictions will be human and entail legal compensation. Mr. Speaker, the Office of the Deputy President has undertaken extensive engagement with all parties in regard to cabinet decisions on eviction, which I fully support, including the Nairobi River, which is an entity under the office of the Deputy President and the County Government of Nairobi. Adherence to these principles become extremely important when we, as state officers, are contemplating legal evacuation of citizens with a duty to avoid inhuman forced evictions that will be contrary to our Constitution and international law. Guideline number six of the United Nations General Assembly guidelines for the implementation of the rights to adequate housing prohibits forced evictions and that the state should ensure that any eviction under domestic law are fully compliant with international law. The guidelines further require meaningful engagement with communities to ensure that the rights of residents are implemented cooperatively without the need for eviction procedures or police enforcement. Mr. Speaker, I have supported the implement implementation of government directives on the eviction, save for the fact that on being informed that the persons 
the siding and along Nairobi River would be evicted and paid 10,000 shillings only, which I and many other Kenyans felt was inadequate compensation for eviction. I insisted that the government should abide by the constitutional dictates and international norms while implementing any cabinet decisions, including eviction, and maintain the dignity of the citizens of Kenyans facing eviction. By 